Okay, here's an article that came in the uh, LA Times. DNA from 4,500-year-old Ethiopian reveals surprise about ancestry of Africans, or people that are in Africa. Moda Cave in Ethiopia, where researchers found the body of a 4,500-year-old man whose DNA is still well-preserved. This is up in the highlands of Ethiopia. It actually uh, gets pretty chilly up there and, and stuff. It's not what you'd really think of as Ethiopia itself, but DNA from a man who lived in Ethiopia about 4,500 years ago is prompting scientists to rethink the history of human migrations in Africa. Until now, the conventional wisdom has been that the first groups of modern humans left Africa roughly 70,000 years ago and stopping in the Middle East en route to Europe, Asia, and beyond. This is the out of Africa theory, at least, uh, which may be shattered at this point, but anyhow. Then about 3,000 years ago, a group of farmers from the Middle East and present-day Turkey came back to the Horn of Africa, probably bringing crops like wheat and uh, barley and lentils with them. It actually predates 33,000, because that would only be 1,000 B.C., and it's well before that. And these are the Kushites and stuff that they talk about in uh, Moreau. Moreau was named after uh, Cambyses' sister, the Persian. Anyhow, uh, population geneticists piece this story together by comparing the DNA of distinct groups of people alive today. Since humans emerged in Africa, or so it seems, DNA from ancient Africa could provide a valuable genetic baseline that would make it easier for scientists to track genome changes over time. Indeed, Africa has the weirdest and wildest genome strangeness that it has into it, and the black people aren't really a monolithic culture either. They can easily tell you kind of what area you're from, so there's a lot of variations on a theme going there um, that you really only see the, you know, you see a slight difference between Greeks and Italians, but uh, there's not even a reason for that, too, and they didn't used to have near as much of a difference, too. But uh, over in Africa, there's a lot of variations, like with the Khoisan, with these Ethiopians that are there. And then up there, you get the Nilotics and people in the Sudanese, which are extremely dark and more lanky type and everything. So there's a lot of variations on a the theme. There's even still some pygmy populations left and so on. So uh, anyhow, unfortunately, such DNA has been hard to come by, just like with Egyptian mummies and everything. DNA isn't built to last for thousands of years. The samples of ancient DNA that have been sequenced to date were extracted from bodies in Europe and Asia were naturally refrigerated in cooler climates and a lot of times in peat bogs and things like that really preserves it. You get them up north in the wrong stuff and acidic soils and things and psh, it just disintegrates away. Uh, it seems like the acidity eats up the calcium and the things that are the bones up to go back into the soil and it basically just erodes the thing away real bad. You almost have to like match it out or have something, uh, a certain environment. That's what makes this Ethiopian man so special. His body was found face down in Moda Cave, they call him Moda Man, which is situated in the highlands of the southern part of the country. The cool, dry conditions of the cave preserved his DNA, and scientists extracted a sample from this petreous bone, which is at the base of the skull. It's one of the places they know they can find it at still, is like there, and of course teeth, and there's a little bone inside your ear and a few other places they've really found now uh, that they can uh, extract it out and the methods that they use they can find that easily it's not contaminated and what does it have to go along with it. The resulting sequence is the first nuclear genome from an ancient African according to a report published in Thursday in the Journal of Sciences. Radiocarbon dating dated that the bone was 4500 years old and that meant that Moda, as a result, researchers called him, lived before Eurasians returned to the African continent. Now, this is about 2500 BC, and so there's still supposed to be some Kushites there uh, around in this time here. And uh, the Egyptians, of course, spread out up and down too, so there's going to be a lot of Caucasian influx from them. But uh, I tell you, consistent with the timeline, Moda did not have any of the genetic variants for light colored eyes or skin that evolved in the populations that left Africa. So, well, so he's more of a Negroid or something? Uh, no, nor did he have the variants that arose in Eurasian farmers that allowed them to digest milk as adults. Also, he's lactose intolerance and hasn't been a farmer or relying on cattle ever either, too. 
So this is um, a primitive from that area. I wonder exactly how his skull shapes out and things like that, but Moda did have three variants that are known to help modern-day Ethiopians live in high altitudes. Oh, I've read about this. He's uh, He was high altitude geared and uh, because he must live up in those hills that are there. And so he's different than a lot of the other uh, Negroids that are all around because they're, of course, made be, you know, not too high above sea level, flat plains and things like that, and not really a mountain uh, black person. But when the researchers compared Moda's genome to those of contemporary, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't finish that last one, the present-day town of Moda lies more than 8,100 feet above sea level. Uh, they even get snow on some points and stuff up there and things that's uh, one of the tributaries that led into their water source that they have now that they've done a damn thing to and things to make it real consistent rather than having a flood situation just like Egypt had done and a lot of others have done. When the researchers compare Moto's genome to those of contemporary humans, the closest match was with the Ari people of southern Ethiopia, uh, so almost in the same area. With this information, the research team was able to investigate the mysterious group of Eurasians that came to Africa 3,000 years ago. They created a model that assumed the Aria genome was a mixture of the DNA from Moda and an unknown population from West Eurasia. Then they plugged in DNA from several different candidate populations to see if they could get a combination that looked like the Ari DNA. Well, two results stood out from the rest. One was for modern-day Sardinians, who are known to be the closest living relatives of the earliest farmers and the people living in Sardinia. The other, uh, Mediterraneans, the other was for members of the so-called LBK culture in Germany, early farmers who lived about 7,000 years ago, Eurasian farmers way up in Germany. If the Eurasian settlers who arrived in Africa 3,000 years ago were indeed descendants of the LBK farmers, then the story of their migration through Africa needs to be revised, the researchers wrote. And yeah, so they're going to have to go and see if they can get any more confirmations out of this. But uh, already at this point, I mean, this is uh, peer-reviewed and then released in a series of papers here. By comparing the LBK genome with the DNA from Africans alive today, the science calculated that these ancient farmers may have made up 25% or more of the population of the Horn of Africa during the migration years. So this is an influx of the people that are very much like uh, your, your Kushites and so on. Not the Nubians of Nubia, but the Kushites that they had talked about because, uh, well, that's supposed to be one of the people out of the Bible anyhow run down through and, and he begot Cush. So this is you know, like the Caucasians came out of the boat and then they had kids and grandkids and so on. So it definitely comes from there. Um, so that, that I guess, is your connective, too. Uh, all of those migrants ultimately pushed farther into Africa than previously thought that they had determined. And uh, I guess so. But even if you look up the definition of Caucasian race, it'll tell you that it comes up uh, through Egypt and North Africa, the Berbers, the Mazai and everybody, the Egyptians, ancient Egyptians, and the people living there now, aren't they? But also in, in ancient times, it tells you, it came up and went through the Horn of Africa. So the people living up above there and everything and through the Horn it never really were the Negroids. The Nubians kept penetrating in there and out and in and out right in that one area. But uh, other than that, the ancient population that's there is not really what was there before and now what we have is a high admixed people that live there let's see what they tell you about it african populations from the western and southern tips of the continent did i do that wrong during my great years on previously determined yeah african populations from the western and southern tips of the continent got at least five percent of their dna from these eurasian migrants so west africans and southern tips of the continent, so down in the Cape, more like the Khoisan, I guess, uh, of their DNA from the Eurasian migrants. According to the study, some of the groups from Ethiopia, Somali, Djibouti, and Eritrea can trace more than 30% of their DNA to these migrants. And uh, I saw an article, I even did one on it here a year and a half ago, well, maybe about a year ago, 
and uh, it was the, the when they were doing the DNA test to him, they realized that uh, 40 to 50 percent, well, mainly about 40 percent in these groups that were uh, testing with DNA, were 40 percent Caucasian, and they found a group of people that were very pale and had a lot of people and few that had light eyes and stuff in the group still and they got their family in the group and everything and they pegged over 50 percent but uh, so kind of odd but then of course that's just the admix that happened there eventually but the people that are there now aren't really kind of the people that were there in elder times and it's what they're showing you here the ability to sequence ancient genomes was uh, revolutionized our understanding of human evolution wrote the research team, which is led by Marcos Gallego, Laurente of University of Cambridge, and Epi Ruth Jones of Trinity College in Dublin. They said they are eager to find even older African genomes that may make the story more complete. And it'd be real neat if we could find some more. The oldest um, modern Negroid skull or you know bones and things that they have found, it's like 4600 BC, and they can't find any before then that they've found. And then they have the... Uh, before that, they have found some, but they are actually a proto-Negroid. And the, the oldest one that they found of those only goes back to like 11,000 uh, BC, so 9,100 uh, BC, actually 11,000 years ago, 9,100 BC. And uh, it'd be neat if they found older and older ones and that they can get DNA out of. Uh, they've definitely detected in the saliva a uh, what's called a MUC7 gene which doesn't seem to show up in any of the people that ever came out of Africa or North Africans. And it, uh, it seems to indicate that they have a ghost hominid in their ancestry, just like uh, Neanderthals and so on. And it shows you that, that pegging in there of something that's totally different than other people carry. And it's kind of a unique thing, like Denisovans and the islanders there have their unique thing. Orientals, Japanese have their unique thing. I guess you know, Caucasians and their light hair and all that stuff have different things about them too, you know, and freckles. You know, I've seen Japanese freckled up people too, but that has to be probably from admix from before. I think a freckling is definitely a, uh, a Caucasian thing, but then again, you see it in people like Morgan Freeman, who actually is, you know, fairly dark, but he has real dark freckles all over his body also over and above that. I've seen a lot of people. We had a girl in our class that was like that. So there must be something with that gene that has to do with freckling. I'm sure they may have found